Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug furosemide, also known as Lasix. Furosemide belongs to the loop diuretic drug classification. To get a good understanding of how this drug works, let's break down the words in that classification. Simply put, diuretics are drugs that will increase the amount of water that is excreted by the body. They do this by increasing the excretion of electrolytes, like sodium, from the kidneys. A good general rule to remember how this works is that water likes to follow sodium. So again, if we get rid of sodium, then we get rid of water too. And the way our body gets rid of the sodium in water is through the urine. A bit more specifically, it is the nephrons of the kidney that are responsible for filtering the fluids in our body and creating that urine. The loop in loop diuretic means that furosemide is acting in a specific part of the nephron, called the loop of Henle. Now, the nephron is very complex, but simply put, the loop of Henle plays an important role in reabsorbing or keeping electrolytes, like sodium, in the body. It is normally responsible for reabsorbing up to 25% of the sodium that passes through the nephron, which normally helps to retain fluid. But furosemide will inhibit this reabsorption of sodium, which increases sodium excretion and water excretion follows. There are many uses for furosemide. Furosemide is often given orally for edema to help remove excess fluid from the body. This is why furosemide is often given to clients with congestive heart failure. If we get rid of excess water, then we also decrease blood pressure by decreasing blood volume. This is why furosemide can be used to treat hypertension as well, usually in combination with other antihypertensive medications. Furosemide can also be used in the treatment of cirrhosis of the liver, various renal injuries, and can be given IV in emergent situations such as acute pulmonary edema. We know that diuretics increase the amount of electrolytes and water that is excreted by the body, which increases urine output. So if given late in the day, furosemide is likely to cause an increase in urination at night, also known as nocturia. Other important side effects of electrolyte and water excretion include hypotension, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances such as hypokalemia. At very high doses, furosemide can also cause autotoxicity, which can manifest as tinnitus, hearing loss, and vertigo. High doses can cause a decrease in thyroid hormone levels as well. Furosemide may increase blood glucose levels, which is important to know for diabetic clients. These are just some of the many side effects of furosemide. Because of the many side effects, there are some cases where we want to avoid the use of furosemide. For example, we want to avoid furosemide in clients with hypotension, electrolyte imbalances such as hypokalemia, dehydration, unmanaged diabetes mellitus, thyroid disorders, and more. Furosemide is also contraindicated in clients who have very little to no urine output, also known as anuria, which is indicative of a urinary obstruction. Always monitor and assess for side effects of furosemide. Monitor intake and output as needed. It is important to administer furosemide early in the morning. It is often given between 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. to reduce nocturia. Clients are often placed on sodium-restricted diets while taking furosemide because high sodium intake can eliminate the effects of a loop diuretic. It is always important to remember the normal range of potassium in the blood, which is approximately 3.5 to 5 millimoles per liter. Remember that hypokalemia is a major side effect of furosemide, and clients will often take potassium supplements or will switch to a potassium-sparing diuretic as needed. And that's about it for the basics of furosemide. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.